Good evening, everybody. Good to be back this evening. Uh, we didn't think we was going to get to be to get out there to our unseen audience tonight. I had a little trouble trying to get on this and that, that and this, and all of that. And who gives a happy about the this and the that, right? Amen. Uh, we're just glad to be here. Amen. You know, uh, I will tell you, Facebook watchers, uh, uh, you know, if they turn us off, they turn us off that we're not going to change just to stay on. Uh, I, I'd rather not be on Facebook and have to preach a lie uh, or lead somebody down the wrong road. Uh, so I hope you watched us long enough to know that. Uh, but it's good to be here. We've got a lot to pray about, people that need prayer, children that need prayer. We've got uh, some in our church tonight that uh, needs prayer. Amelia and uh, Elias is uh, a sick or sick tonight and uh, uh, just pray the Lord to touch and uh, uh, tell me I, I can't pronounce the little one's name Anakin, Han Anakin. Uh, I, I'll either get that twist up and call it Canon Anakin and, uh, <laughs> uh, we got uh, people that's lost their loved ones and uh, do pray for that Leon got a good report let's keep praying for little, little David that's David Agnew we just call him little David and David goes uh, June the second down to uh, in the Birmingham area, and uh, we got a lot to pray about, ain't we? And God's been good to us. Uh, we the sun's. I told him I feel just like a raisin tonight. Sun feel like sun just dried me up. Uh, amen. Somebody asked me how I was doing. I, I'm fine as a frog. How long to get it off once it's been sun blistered? But, but uh, it's good to be here. Any uh, prayer requests before we get started? Amen. Remember Amen. Bud Anderson. Remember my mother. Amen. Uh, we know anything uh, different other than just many strokes of what? Yeah, she's got to go back because she's got an arm and a neck. They don't, they don't know nothing about that yet. She's got to make an appointment. Amen. Go to the doctor. Amen. Let's pray about that. Anyone else? Uh, I've seen a, a guy today. Uh, we want his name Scott. Told him we put him in our prayer book. Uh, they run him some tests on him about his heart, and so uh, let's remember him also tonight. Uh, he, he is the father of a, one of the most precious little girls that was a part of our St. Jude uh, team, and the Lord carried her on her cheek. We call her Sunshine. And uh, uh, she uh, lived long enough to get her driving license and uh, got to drive a little bit, but. Uh, she was the most precious little girl, and uh, I told him today we'd never forget her. Uh, that's for sure, or I won't. And uh, so I, I do want you to pray. Uh, this family needs prayer. I do pray for all the children in St. Jude's and uh, Shriners and all the other hospitals. Pray for them today also. Pray for the hospital and the rest home still full of people today. And let's remember these. Mary, Mary Davis said, remember them. I have some unspoken. Amen. Let's remember Miss Davis's family. Baby, y'all remember my kids. Amen. They Amen. know of Jesus, but they're just here a little more than they ain't know God bless you, Trey. Bless you. And y'all, I, I, I am not nicknamed him. That's his real name, Trey. <laughs> yeah. Somebody said, why? My is that your nickname? Yeah. Well, what is your real name? Lacey. Well, we're just going to keep calling you trail if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 amen. Yeah. Uh, my God, come up with a name like that, I'd stick the trail. <laughs> amen. Uh, <all> right. <laughs> At work, they call him Lightning. Lightning. They don't know it's Lacey. If, if, if they call him Lightning as slow as he is, they must not move at all. <laughs> Oh, well, 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 praise the Lord. They say lightning never strikes twice the same place you've seen Wayne's face. <laughs> uh, I better hush. I'll get on the roll. We'll never get started. David, uh, can you remember my brother uh, in prayer? Um, he's going to surgery on June 2nd. They're going to replace four of his vertebrates in his back. Mm -hmm. Which one is that now? Which one is that? Lucian. Okay. Uh, going to replace four vertebrae. 
So let's be much in prayer about this. And we have a friend who's named Bruford. Amen. Amen. I believe in prayer, don't y'all? Amen. Amen. All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Brother David, would you ask God's blessing? Yes, we do, God. Yes, Lord. A blessing to our ears, Father, and to our hearts, God. We we thank you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll try this old song. I have good on gospel ship. May I change the keys? I'm gonna change keys. <laughs> that thing is rolling about uh, hell. I don't know. see him out there in Facebook land, but he come a run, I mean, he come a sang her nut through there. Is that too right? Can you reach that? Oh, I better not go. Okay. <laughs> what we do? Let's do it's got the whole world in his hand. You want to do that? Are you doing, which one do you really want to do? I'll do whichever one you really want to do. Which one do you really want to do? Lighter, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right. Woo. I almost missed my Nancy chair. <laughs> you ready? Oh, this little light, I can't 
can get it started. I got that. Go ahead and start. I got the old gospel shell.
just won't make a mess up on that. I can just mess something up on me. David was asked if you believe in prayer. Well, I'm here. And that life will pray for me. That's right. I believe that. Now and then, a friend of mine. Been wanting to do that song, Glory Road. 
about a year. Mildred used to do this, and I'm going to try to do it in her honor. Uh, it's E flat major. I used to be a baker. I had no silver or gold. My house was just a cabin. My clothes were ragged and cold. But one day I went to an altar. I bowed on my knees and prayed. Jesus reached down and touched me. Came up with
Dad, if you'd hear it, Mary, you'd say you had there's a problem with the sound. I've done all I can do on this end. There's been a lot of problems lately with the sound. And if this guitar at times sounds really loud and you can't hear other things and the others sound a little bit loud and you can't. And here it don't sound that way, but on when you come to that video, you can only hear one or two things. So uh, something with that phone. No, it's all phones today. We've had a lot of trouble about yeah. phones. It's all them sun things that hit the earth today. Yep, probably uh, so. Uh, nobody has thought about that. I did until Joanne said something about it, but I've had trouble all day long with my phone being in effect to talk to people in the fed. So uh, we apologize. Uh, just just uh, pray the Lord will clear things up for us, okay? I don't know if this is right, Key, but this is a song that, uh, be play, uh, that uh, Mary asked for. Took me a minute when you wrote that post. Uh, you said. Do you know, after you asked that prayer request, you said, do you know I claim the blood? And I started to say, well, we all do if we're praying in the name of Jesus. But then I understood what you're saying. He's asking for you that song. But, uh, we love you. We appreciate you. I have a soul. A strength when I have weak. That takes me to when life is
He took one little step and got the view. So just take one little step and God will take two. He'll always be there for me and for you. When the world says it's over, they say it's true. Take one little step and God will take two. church, isn't it? Amen. There's just something about coming to church, or it is for me. I can come tired, and I leave tired, but I feel good all in between, don't y'all? Amen. Amen. We're going to start in the first verse. Read about nine verses, if the Lord be will, willing tonight. Now, it's not, it's not unfamiliar. It's very familiar scripture. But all the Bible is familiar when you study it. And it amen. Sometimes we, uh, there's so much we might not remember a lot. So we get to reading and, and thinking and talking about it. Then everything comes back to your mind. See, studying don't always just manifest itself immediately. Sometimes your studying manifests itself as you're testifying to people or talking to people. And God just brings verses and stuff back into your mind uh, and your heart. Listen to what the Bible says. And after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to, the, to Jerusalem. And there was at the Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind and halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease that he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he'd been there a long time, in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked, on the, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Now let us pray, amen. Father, we do thank you for this most blessed day. We thank you, God, for uh, the wonders that you perform each and every day in our eyes in our lives. And God, there's things that, uh, maybe they're small to a lot of folk, but God, they're big things to us. And we're thankful for every prayer you've answered, for every time you, we felt the touch of your hand in our life, for every time you've nurtured us back on the right path when, uh, God, we found ourselves straying in the wrong direction. 
We're thankful today for your word, God. It uh, sure is a, a, a lamp unto our pathway of life, unto our feet. It, it is, uh, God. It's everything we need tonight. It shows us the way that we need to go. And God, the Bible teaches us we know not how to direct our own steps. I'm glad we have this book, God, to show us the way to go. Father, our prayer tonight is that the lost would come to the knowledge of your saving grace. And Lord, we've said it so many times that uh, uh, we feel like your coming is near and we see the things around us. And, and we, we send out a plea to people to consider their ways and prepare to meet you. And God, it seems like it's just water off a duck's back. It seemed like we bought this button our head against the wall, but I imagine Noah felt that way as, as he preached 120 years that a flood was coming, but yet people would not believe, but God, it did not stop what he said would be through your precious word. And Father, nothing's going to change what you've said is coming. Not, not anyone that's put in any office of government, Congress or government, no, not any country in the whole world that's going to prevent what you said is coming. And Lord, therefore, we must in our heart know to prepare to meet you. Bless now, Father, our feeble efforts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe all the things that the Bible says, don't you? Amen. The part about the uh, troubling of the water and uh, the fourth verse, and some of the manuscripts are, are writings, they're not even there. They're completely left out. If you've got a Bible that's left it out, I'd throw it away and get me a good. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, I want to talk to you about, and, and I may be a little slower tonight. Maybe I, I won't take up a whole lot of your time. Wayne's already accused me I was going to preach five minutes longer because they took five minutes to get me on. <laughs> yeah? When Jesus passes by, and boy, there's a lot right there, and we don't have to uh, run the aisles to get blessed over that thought, do we? When Jesus passes by. You know, for all of us here today, and people that is under the sound of my voice, that's been rescued from the fiery flames of hell, and if you're saved, that's exactly what you've been done. If you're saved tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the blood, the atonement he made, has rescued you from the fiery flames of hell. Amen. He has set you free, friend of mine, forgiving your sins. He has set you free from the bondage of sin. He's been showed you God's grace and God's mercy. The question I want to ask you, do you still remember how it felt when Jesus passed by? Amen. Huh? Still remember what a feeling was in your heart when Jesus passed by. Does, does the thought, friend of mine, still make you want to shout and praise the Lord, Amen. knowing Amen. that you were lost and on your way to hell, but you're saved now and got a home in heaven? Amen. And you didn't have none of that except hell until Jesus passed by. Amen. Amen. Before Jesus passed by you, you had no hope. You had an eternity of, uh, of darkness and separation from God, an eternity of condemnation. And then Jesus passed by, and friend of mine, he found you, and you called upon his name, and he washed you in his blood, sealed you by the Holy Ghost, and wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and everything's changed from that day throughout eternity. You've been changed. Is that something? Amen. And it all happened. When Jesus passed by. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I want you to think about that. Friend, just to know that the doorway of heaven was open unto you. And to know that you were invited to come in. That's a wonderful feeling today. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of places you and I will never get invited to. Amen. Well, me being the preacher I am and Facebook, the people they are and the president and the Congress probably knowing how we stand and you stand, we'll never get invited up there. Amen. Huh? Is that getting close, David? All right. There's a lot of places I'll never get invited to. But can I share something with you? There's a lot of places I pray to God I'll never get invited to. Amen. But there's one I have been invited to, and I'm going there, and that's the glory land, ain't you? Amen. That's right. 
Amen. Amen. Jesus, friend of mine, is the door. The door was open. I was invited to come in. I accepted him as the Lord and Savior. And, and so did you. And, and, and I thought about this. Do you still remember the excitement that flooded your soul and when you called upon the name of Jesus, friend of mine, and you felt the touch of his love as he began to transform you into a brand new creature? Amen. Amen. You know, I, I, uh, that old song that Mildred sang, I went down a beggar, came up a millionaire, is talking about the transformation that is made from the lost to being saved. Amen. Uh, the worldly things didn't change. My worldly status didn't change, but my spiritual things changed altogether. Amen. I may live in a cabin, but I got a mansion on the other side. I, my clothes may not be I, I, what a lot of people think is good, but I got a robe on the other side, and I've got a crown of righteousness because I I love the appearing of the Lord and the thought of the appearing of the Lord. Amen. Now, there's a street of gold, a, a river of life. Everything the Bible says that's in God's glory I will have access to because one day Jesus passed by me. Amen. What about you tonight? A brand new creature. Isn't that something today? I believe for all of us, friend of mine, that's been saved that we can still remember that blessed hour when Jesus passed by. Amen. Amen. Still remember that blessed hour. A friend of mine, I, I know the place where I got saved. I know the beach I was sitting on. And, amen. And, and I know, friend of mine, the very moment that I had turned loose at the back of the beach to let Joanne go out and go to pray. And, and I tried to get back hold of the beach and God wouldn't let me. The devil told me to take hold. God told me not to. And the Holy Spirit of God led me to the altar because I knew I had no more chance here. But Jesus passed by. I thank God for that most blessed day when Jesus passed Passed by and made me a child of Amen. the King. Amen. 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 Jesus passed by to do that. <laughs> hey, tonight, I will never get on this as well. Amen. In the mind, I thought about this. When Jesus is in the house, uh, anything can happen. Did you know that? Amen. Friend of mine, what's wrong with our services so many times that uh, a friend of mine, the joy is gone, the excitement is gone, the miracles are not there, people are not being blessed, prayers are not being made. It's because we hadn't invited Jesus to come in. Amen. Amen. We hadn't invited the presence of God. We hadn't invited the love of God. A friend of mine, every now and then when the love of God begins to show out in the house of God, you just can't stop him and you just can't hinder him. And he begins I to flood your heart from the top of your head to the bottom of your soul. Friend of mine, that's when God's in the house. That's when everything is possible. Just call on his name, believe and trust. God will answer. Ain't Amen. you glad that tonight? Amen. Boy, when God's in the house, things can happen tonight. You don't have to have a church full for it to happen. Amen. Amen. When there's two or three gathered together in my name, he said, I'll be in the midst. Amen. Now, there's always a friend of mine, four of us, no matter where I go, and that don't mean I'm big. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, uh, David, you better not be smart and off about my size like you was Wayne. Now, Wayne was aggravating David about being cold and chilly since he's about... Uh, uh, tucking the medicine and the th stuff, and David told him he just it had a lot to do with their sizes. Amen. And I think he was looking at both of us. Amen. Hey, man. Uh, Wayne asked for it, brother. Wayne asked for it, but I didn't. <laughs> hey, man. Wayne, Wayne, Wayne is just husky. I'm just well insulated. <laughs> Somebody said you're fat. I'm reasonably plump. <laughs> Did you know, Wayne, the Bible says God loves fat people? Right. Amen. All of us. Amen. Ain't, I, ain't you glad God really loves me and you? There's a lot more of us to love than there are some of these <laughs> folks here tonight. Amen. Boy, David, when God wraps his arms around me and Wayne, he stretches way to get up. <laughs> hey, It ain't like grabbing one of you little old skinny fella and said, come here, let me hug you. He has to reach way out there and get up. I better get off of that. <laughs> when Jesus, he does pass by like that and get us done. Amen. Great and wonderful things happen when Jesus passes by. Amen. You know, we need to tell our heart that the Lord is here. I believe he's here tonight, Amen. don't y'all? We need to tell our heart that the Lord is here for the mind. And, and when he passes by that, we're going to reach out in faith and we're going to be blessed. Amen. It's just that easy. When you feel the presence of God, friend of mine, 
in the, in the house of God or your home or car, wherever you are. Now, all you got to do is just reach out in faith and be blessed. That's how easy it is. You see, anywhere God is, you can be blessed. If you just believe tonight. <laughs> You know, the scriptures that we have read are, are very familiar. I, well, we sang a song about it the other night, uh, about this miracle. And we've heard them so many times, but God led me to them tonight. Uh, I want you to understand, friend of mine, nothing is more gratifying than to know that God's word is true. I don't have to question about this. I'm not like some of those other religions, friend of mine, that questions whether or not what they're believing is real or not. I know this is real. I know this is true. Amen. Friend of mine, there ain't no man in the world or group of men I could get together and write something that's been as accurate and truthful and as terrible and as stood as long as the Word of God has been tonight. Amen. Ain't you glad? How many of y'all believe the Word of God is true? Amen. Give the Lord praise. Friend of mine, when you know that the Word of God is true, you can ponder on it uh, with utmost confidence. In this, that the same God that has touched others is the same God that you serve. And if God has no respect for person in which he says he doesn't, then if God has touched others, then God can touch you. Amen. Amen. Isn't that something today? You know, God, as I said by not having any respect, respect a person assures you that friend of mine that you're dear to his heart. Did, have you ever thought how dear you are to the heart of God? Amen. God paid a price for you. Amen. You're a treasure in the heart of God. It cost heaven the best thing heaven had for you to be dear to the heart of God. Amen. Jesus had to come and take your place. We should have been crucified. Every one of us should have died. Amen. We couldn't have shed any blood that had any merit of, of, of salvation. But friend of mine, there was no guile. There was no wrong. There was no sin found in the mouth of Jesus. But yet he took upon himself all of our sin that you and I could have a home in heaven. Isn't that Amen. something? You know, that makes us dear to the heart. It makes you so dear to the heart of God that because of the shedding of the blood and your acceptance of the gift of salvation, God claims you as a son of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, you'll never amount to nothing. I've already amounted to more than I ever thought I would, and I don't think I'll ever amount to anything any better. I have become a son of God. I have become a son of God. Ain't you glad tonight that through the blood of Jesus you have become a son of God? You're a somebody in glory here tonight. Amen. Amen. You're somebody tonight. Amen. I may have to crawl home, but I'm having a good time now. Amen. Amen. Friend of mine, listen. I thought about this. We've been given a scene of, of a great need and so much pain and suffering, and, and all of it was congregated together. And you know what they had? Uh, they had the same goal. In, in this place where all these people were uh, sick and afflicted, they all had the same goal. They all, friend of mine, wanted to be the first to get in the pool after the angel troubled the water. Amen. But listen, they didn't know when it was going to happen. You yeah, ever heard that old saying, I, just, I must have been in the right place at the right time? Amen. Amen. Well, that's, that's how Liz felt when she got a hold of Leon. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. I should have changed that around. Okay. They didn't know when it was going to happen. Amen. They couldn't go on and just do what they wanted to and, and gamble. They, they had to try to draw as close as they could. Those that had greater need. Now those that had lesser need were the ones that would walk over the sickly and jump in the water and be healed. But those of great need had to, in the mind, stay as close as they could. Because they never knew when the angel was going to trouble the water. In the mind, listen. The man that these scriptures uh, circumvent or, or uh, uh, surround is uh, uh, suffered with his infirmity for 38 years. 38 years. And all the while, you know what? He kept holding on to the hope of making it into the water and being healed. That's a long time, man. Amen. Amen. 38 years he kept 
hoping I'll be next. The next time, it'll be me. Can you imagine over 38 years that he might have grown weak? He might have grown very frail. Friend of mine, we, we've talked about that there is no coincidence that surrounds anything the Lord did. Nothing that God or the Lord did was a coincidence. Jesus just didn't happen by that pool. Amen. I, I told a man uh, this week that every footstep of Jesus, friend of mine, uh, even before uh, he come to this earth, every footstep of Jesus was foreordained. Everywhere that he would go was foreordained. It wasn't no coincidence that Zacchaeus was up that sycamore tree. Amen. God had already foreordained. Jesus was going to go by that sycamore tree. And in the mind, if Zacchaeus wanted the blessing, then he'd be obedient to his heart and climb that thing and be waiting on him. The Lord is here tonight, but, but he can only do what you will allow him to do through your faith and your own heart for you tonight. Amen. Zacchaeus made a chance to make a choice, as, as we all do tonight, don't we? But let's look at this man just for a moment, friend of mine. 38 years, 38 years. I thought about why did Jesus show up, and I said it because, friend of mine, he was supposed to come that way. He was supposed to be there. So, some, as, uh, as this man had waited 38 years, had been there a long time, but Friend of mine, he could never make it into the water. It wasn't that he didn't try. I believe he tried many times. Wouldn't you have? I believe, friend of mine, that Wayne, that he got in an elbow race with them that had one leg. That ain't funny, but it, it, it is a, it, it's a good sight. If you see people uh, that's got a true heart for God, they won't let nothing keep them from getting to where they can get a blessing. Can you see him getting in an elbow race with this and that had with one leg? And maybe hey, a friend of mine, him and that one with one leg, got it over racing someone that didn't have no legs at all. But yet they didn't let none of this keep them from having the desire to be blessed. But yet we come to the house of God so many times, uh, so downtrodden in spirit, uh, so heavy burdened in our heart that we let these things hinder the blessings of God when we get here, amen. I believe this old boy tried. Hey Amen. Somebody always stepped over him. Now, I don't know about y'all, but uh, if he didn't get mad, Wayne, he was a whole lot closer to God than me. Uh, I, you know, if I was one, one arm leak away from the water, and here come this big old dude uh, uh, skipping along, hollering, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you, and jumped over me and jumped in the water, I'd baptize him three times whether he needed it or not. <laughs> Wouldn't you? But every time, every time, somebody'd always beat him. Amen. He didn't know it, but Jesus was going to pass by this way. Amen. Don't ever give up. You, you know, you, you might not get a prayer answer today, or, or things might not go the way you think they ought to go. Don't, don't never give up. No, you don't never know when Jesus is going to pass by. He didn't know it, but Jesus was going to pass by. And his life would be changed forever. Do you understand that this man had been sick longer than Jesus had been on the face of this earth as God's only begotten? Amen. He had been sick for 38 years and Jesus at this time was only about 33 and a half years old. He had been sick longer than Jesus had been here as God's only begotten. But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said Jesus knew you ever thought about it? Jesus knew that this man had been there a long time in this case. Jesus already knew. Before he ever got to the pool of Bethesda, he already knew this fellow had been there 38 years. Amen. Already knew. There was five porches in this place, the Bible said. And there was a great multitude of impotent folk. They were some blind and hauled and withered. But Jesus passed by this place on behalf of this man. Could Jesus have healed them all? But he didn't heal nobody but this one man. 
Right? Just one man. He came all that way for that one man. Amen. Somebody said, oh, I don't believe that he just came for them. Well, the Bible says he conveyed himself. This man didn't even know it was Jesus that had spoke to him. When the Jews asked him who had told him to take up his couch, he couldn't tell them because Jesus had conveyed himself uh, because of the multitude. Yeah, you say, I don't understand that. Neither do I, but I'm like God. God had a purpose and a reason for what he did, doesn't he? Amen. Listen, 38 years is a long time. Can you understand that we don't even know this man's name? A, a, a miracle as great as this. We don't even know this man's name. But one thing we do know, we do know that he'd been there 38 years and he'd been laying there in that place. But at the words of Jesus, he walked out. Amen. Huh? He didn't have to be carried out. He carried the couch that he laid on 38 years. Now, the Jews didn't like it. Now, the devil don't ever like when you get a blessing from God. Amen. You can leave the church on Sunday all filled up, and the devil will be there on Monday on the job trying to drag you back down. Amen. You get a phone call, and they're trying to drag you back down. But this old boy walked out of that place. Amen. After that time of being there, amen. And he didn't walk out because of the water being troubled, did he? He walked out because Jesus Christ said, take up your bed and walk. Amen. Now, uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to get back to this. Uh, have you thought about the power of that word? Now, picture yourself laying there 38 years. All of the times that you couldn't make it to the water. And here stands somebody you don't even know that you can't even see telling you to get up. Get up. David, there had to be some power in them words. There had to be something in that word that, that touched that guy's heart to the innermost of his being because he did not question nowhere in the Bible does he question what the Lord said. He just got up. Amen. Amen. Just got up. Well, that's a miracle when Jesus passes by, isn't it? Amen. Today. Amen. There's something in the words of Jesus, even though he didn't know who he was. Amen. The Bible said it was on the Sabbath day. And of course you had some of them Jews there. And, and I'm not I'm not using that as a slang word. Uh, these were Jews that were, had built themselves up in, in places of authority. These were them that, that said, do as I say, not as I do. Somebody said there wasn't none of them all. Yes, they were. They called scribes and Pharisees and Sanhedrins. Yep. Huh? Maybe we ought to say Sanhedrins. <laughs> Amen. Uh, they were supposed to be Sanhedrin, but on that Sanhedrin, they were some of Sanhedrins. <laughs> Amen. Didn't like they ain't all deacons. Some of them's dickens. And some of them worse than that. I just can't think of a word to, to rhyme. There's some, you know, they're, they're, they were good people. That, and, and that's what I'm saying. I'm not just using that as a slang. And, and uh, the deacons, is, uh, there's good and there's bad. And there's preachers good and bad. Amen. Somebody said, where do you place yourself? Depending on how you act when, when I come your way. <laughs> if you smile, I can smile. If you grunt, I can grunt. If you jump, I can jump. Bless the Lord. They were just troublemakers. You know what they were? They they were they were down right then. Oh God, I've done shuck out my hand cleaner. Because he was carrying his bed on the Sabbath. You know why they were doing that? See, they had in their mind, they had passed judgment that the fourth commandment, friend of mine, uh, he was breaking the fourth commandment by not keeping it holy, by carrying his, his couch that he laid on. They had considered that to be a furniture. Can I tell you something? Jesus Christ did not, will not, has not, ever told anybody to do anything that was contrary to the teachings of the word of God or the law of God or that was anything wrong. Jesus told him to do it. He wasn't breaking any commandment of God because Jesus told him to do it. Amen. But in their mind, amen, they passed the rule. Did you know that? Amen. 
Jesus knew. Jesus knew. They condemned him. And I'll say this, folks. If they'd have been laying there for 38 years and somebody told them to get up, I believe they'd have carried their bed without question, don't you? I know I would have. Amen. There was something in the mind that Jesus uh, said and in the power of his word. And the Jews didn't like what was going on. Amen. As I said, they couldn't tell him. They wanted to know who he was. You know why they wanted to know? Jesus had told this man to, to, to get up after 38 years. He had healed him. And they wanted to go kill him. They wanted to go kill him. Why? Because he had broke the law according to them. According to them. Amen. He didn't know. But afterwards, you know where Jesus found a man that had been laying 38 years with an infirmity, 38 years of sickness, 38 years, amen. He didn't find him at McDonald's. He wasn't at Choo Choo Barbecue. David, you know where he found him? In the temple. Isn't that amazing? No wonder that the Lord made a, a, a trip by the pool of Bethesda. There was this man that had a heart for God that even though he'd laid 38 years, when he told him to rise up and take up his bed, he went straight to the temple. Why did he go to the temple? I believe to give God thanks for what God had done. Amen. You know, I, 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 said, I, I, I don't know about these people that say they've been blessed of God, but they never show up at the house of God. Amen. Uh, I just want to come and give God praise and go to somebody said, I can praise God and good at home as I can at church. I guess you can. Your heart ain't right in either place. Amen. Huh? Get your heart right and you'll want to come and give God praise and glory Amen. and fellowship and worship and lift up his name. Ain't that something today? I don't believe in all that stuff. Good! Stay at home. You ain't nothing but a hindrance know how. Amen. I believe if you want to be a blessing, you got to be a blessing. You can't be a blessing with that old hard-hearted, dilatory attitude that you got. Amen. You need to get right. Somebody said, well, every time I come to that church, I don't never get blessed. Why? Why have you looked in the mirror lately? Amen. Amen. I realized the trail, right? Zeller has to keep that and cover it up and she won't be able to look in it herself because he ever looks in it he's got to throw it away. It's cracked. Amen. But people are not looking. The church is at fault. The church is at fault. The church is at fault. Can I say to you today, if you're a part of a church and you know everything's right in your heart, but you're not getting fed, you're not growing, you're not getting preached the word of God, then leave. Amen. Amen. But if all the other's going on and you're still not getting blessed, I believe I'd get right with God. Amen. Amen. Somebody was complaining about their church. Amen. To, to this guy and said, uh, I'm not getting fed. I'm, I'm not getting to worship. I'm not growing. He said, well, why don't you leave? He said, well, said, Grandma and Grandpa are buried back yonder in that cemetery, and I, I just feel like I need to come. He said, bless God, and thank you enough, they believe. Amen. Amen. First of all, we've got to look at self, right? How many of y'all know that our life is too short not to live it growing and doing God's will? You see, I want to know more about the truth. I want to be told the truth. I want to be told when I've sinned. I want to be told when I've gone down the wrong path. I want to be told that. Amen. I'm not condemning the preacher or the people that tells me that. I'm just, I'm condemned with them all life. I'm just praising God that he loves me enough to nurture me back in the path of the straight and narrow. I just thank the Lord that this man, and, and this is not a parable, this is true, that the Lord found him in the temple. Amen. And the Lord told him to go and sin no more. You know what he told him? He said, unless the worst thing come against you. Why well, now? 38 years, and the Lord's saying, hey, there's worse things than this. Do you know that? 
Somebody said, I'm having trouble with this and that. Listen, sometimes this arm don't work. Sometimes that arm don't work. Sometimes I got a cramp in that leg. Sometimes I got a cramp in that leg. Sometimes my back just kills me. But I have come to the conclusion, Rosie, worse things can happen. Amen. The Lord said, lest worse things come. Worse things than laying in on 38 years. Can you imagine that? Well, I can imagine every time that old boy of the devil come tempting him and trying to pull him away, he, he had a reminder of them 38 years. Yeah. How many of y'all have got uh, scars and you don't raise your hand, but you got scars in your life that God has healed around? But a uh, friend of mine, there's times the devil tries to get you to look in at the past. And if you look long enough, you'll begin to lust after the life that you once lived. And then when you begin to get those feelings, God shows you that scar. Shows you that's God. And he shows you that it's been healed around. But it can get worse again. Did you know that? Oh, I better hurry and hush. I'm having such a good time. Amen. Amen. I believe, friend of mine, uh, that when Jesus passes by and changes your life, whether it's a healing for your body or your soul, that it instill in you a desire to go to God's house and worship him for it. Don't you? Amen. Friend of mine. Uh, I believe there's a lot of people that can more readily identify with the fleshly healing, but I want to say to you that the greatest healing that anyone can ever receive is to be saved. The greatest sickness that's ever been cured is sin sickness. Do you know that? There ain't no doctor can do it. The great physician does, but there ain't no doctor can do it. It, it, it. And there's only one medicine, there's only one thing that can, can cure sin sickness today. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you hear me tonight? Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus. I, I believe, friend of mine, there's no greater healing than being saved today. Amen. No greater healing. Cleansing your heart through the blood of Jesus today. Do you realize there's no limit to what can happen when Jesus passes by? We, 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 when Jesus passes by, there's no limit. We can't say, well, God's going to touch one, God's going to touch two, or God's going to do this or that. There's no limit. There's no limit to what God can do when he passes by. That means whatever needs you've got in your heart, God can supply that need. God can touch you. God can change you. And God can help you. Amen. You know, he touched, and I'll hush in a minute, Alabama men. Give me an Alabama minute. They're an hour behind us. That gives me an Whoa, Wayne sent up back there and said, Bless God, why did he play light? <laughs> hey, man. Uh, I, 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 yeah, he talked just like that old guy and, and, uh, that they made the movie. And, and, and he realized he put his foot in his mouth. And he said, well, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> hey, man. Think about blind Bartimaeus. Amen. How many times did he sit by the roadside begging, wait, uh, pleading for the compassion of the people? Hey, they didn't have none of these uh, substances that we have now uh, uh, to help people that were blind or, or, or sick. And they didn't have none of that. They relied on compassion if they didn't have family. And it was compassion from someone that would give. Give. Amen. I, I, I believe that uh, our Congress people took a lesson from some of those that sat on the wayside because all they wanted is guilt, guilt, guilt. Amen. I'll send this petition in, Fergie, but if you'll give me $25 to have it processed. Well, just tell me where to send it, and I'll do it on my own, and I'll do it for 50 cents. Amen. Oh, by and by the mass, he heard a crowd coming. Now, to a lot of people, they uh, anticipated that he was going to get a plate full of coins, but he began to ask what's going on. You see, he hadn't heard a crowd like that coming up the road. And somebody said, there's a man called Jesus that's coming this way. No, the Bartimaeus didn't have to ask any more questions. He began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know, there's, there were some of them churchy people there. Yeah, some of them from the first uh, righteous church of the frozen, you know. 
They got a pastor called Dr. Jack Frost. And they begin to run over there. Can you almost see them? Yeah. Like some of these highfalutin churches, when people begin to get in the happy, said, Oh, you can't do that here. You can't shout here. Amen. Don't you sing too loud, you're going to disturb the one in front of you. And they begin to go over You know what they said? Shh, shh, be quiet. Be quiet. And he just got louder. Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. And he wouldn't shut up. And the Lord heard him. I believe he heard him the first time. I just believe he waited to see if he really meant what he wanted to say, don't you? And the Lord said, Bring him to me. And then that churchy crowd changed their attitude. Hey, Amen. Well, it's all right now. He wants you. Come on over here now. And the Lord asked him what did he want him to do. Somebody said, well, didn't God know he was blind? Well, blind people don't always pray that they'd see. Sometimes they have greater burdens than just sight. Mm -hmm. And he asked the Lord for his sight. And God healed him there on the road. Amen. Healed him. Jesus passed by. Out of all the times that he'd been on that road, Jesus had never passed by. But the very moment Jesus passed by, something happened. Amen. Amen. As Jesus was going through Jericho, there was that woman with the issue of blood. That she had a flow of blood. She done spend everything she had. The doctors couldn't couldn't help her. Oh, I'm sure why you like the modern day doctor to this and says, I can't do nothing. And said, oh, I can. And after they run, run out your insurance, you got, out, oh, I think I can. After you done sold your house, I think I can. You sell your car and then you're down to your life, pair of socks and your holy underwear and ain't nobody can help you. She didn't have nothing, David. The Bible said she'd spent it all and she'd only got worse. But you know why? Jesus hadn't passed by. We put our confidence sometimes in the wrong person. I'm glad we got doctors, but they can't heal unless God lets them. Your body, they can pump you full of medicine, but unless your body accepts it, it'll never do you no good. Jesus passed by. And she didn't even cry out to him. You know what she said? She said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, and some of those other scriptures say touch his clothes. Now some of our teachers say it was the prayer cloth that he had around him and that she would touch those tassels. And, and we know that if he studied the prayer cloth that all of those tassels mean something different. I don't know what she touched. But she had been this way for 12 years. Can you imagine having a flow of blood 12 years? And a multitude there, a multitude. They were all around him. But somehow, Joyce, she made her way through that crowd, a feeble woman, and touched his clothes. Amen. And she was healed. Amen. Out of 12 years, nothing happening. Then Jesus passed by. You see, I don't know how long you've sat here needing something in your life, but I'm here to tell you things happen when Jesus passes by. Amen. Things that have never happened before, never happened in your whole life can happen when Jesus passes by. You know what Jesus said? Who touched me? Amen. How would you like to answer that question? Now he said, Lord, said they're throgging you. There's countless people touching you. You want me to tell you who, who touched you? They all have. He said, somebody's touched me. I have felt virtue go out of my body. In other words, you know what he was saying? Somebody really believes has touched me. Somebody that really believes that I can do it has touched me. And he looked around and he saw this lady and she was a little afraid. But he, you know what he told her? 
thy faith hath made thee whole. Ain't that something? Hey, she didn't get, she didn't put on a scene. She didn't get greased up and water on the floor. She wasn't slain in the spirit. She was filled with God's spirit. Isn't that something? I, I, you shouldn't preach on that. Well, I'm just telling you slain means kill you. And, and, and uh, I'm not going to say that God don't need to knock some sense in some of us, but he's not going to kill me, uh, friend of mine. He's going to fill me that I can worship him. And bring. Hey, are you with me? Amen. She didn't have a big scene. We don't even know her name. But after 12 years of having that, the Bible says that it was statute. That means it stopped. How did it do it? Well, Jesus passed by. And she had enough faith to believe and she just got close enough to touch him. You know what? Some of us need to start praying, God, let me get close enough. Let me live a life godly enough that I am close enough that I can touch the hymn of your God. God, that we might get closer and closer to you today. Let me tell you about one more. And y'all get a song ready. And I want you to envision this. The Bible says that the Lord came by the city of Nain. And you know what he's seen there at the gate? There was a funeral possession. And there was a mother walking along behind the people that were carrying a castic, and in that castic was her only son. And and that's bad enough. To lose your child is bad enough. But she'd already lost her husband. She had nobody. She was a widow. And the Bible said that Jesus had compassion on her. You know what he did? He went over and touched the briar. As the Bible says, which is the coffin. And he's told him, said, I say unto the young man, arise. You know what happened? Hey man, that, that fella set up and went to talking. Now, trail, uh, the Bible says them guys stopped. I don't know if I'd have just stopped. I'd have probably let him down in a hurry. <laughs> I'd have probably said, okay, guy, if you're able to talk, you can walk. <laughs> Ain't no need to be a token. Huh? I thought it would be like old, old guy singing the song when, when that fellow set up in the casket because he had rheumatism and they had the chains and the ropes and all of them fell off and, and he just set up and he's the only one there and he said, if you're going to set up, ain't no need me setting up. I'm going home. <laughs> Amen. But he began to talk. And the Bible says that the Lord delivered him to his mother. You know what she was looking at? She was looking at a life of loneliness. She was looking at a life of, of being alone, not having her son, not having any family. Amen. Nobody there to help her. But it all changed. You know why? Because Jesus passed by. Amen. I don't know what anybody's needs is here tonight. Oh, I got a lot more to say, but uh, I guess according to Wayne, my Alabama men, it's up. Have you thought about what you could ask the Lord for tonight? Hey, I don't, I don't need to go home and make a list. Say, God, I'm going to ask you for this, this, this. No, no, no. God don't want that. God wants you to speak from your heart based on what you feel now. Now. Have you thought about what you could ask the Lord for in your life or someone else's life? And you know that God's going to listen and answer. Now, it's all according to God's will. And uh, how, how can I say that? Because I back up. And I tell you, the multitude wasn't healed. But the man of 38 years was. The multitude wasn't healed that was touching him. But the woman, uh, a friend of mine with issue of blood was. And all of them people. Out, now, the Bible does not say that Barnabas was the only blind person in the crowd. But it does say he's the only one that got healed, right? Amen. And out of all of those in the graveyard, only this boy came alive. But we don't know what God's will is. We just pray it. God, if it's thy will, amen. And, and when we pray it in God's will, you know what that's showing? Humbleness. We're not declaring that God has to do anything. 
We're just praying, God, if you see fit, do it. But if you don't do it today, I'm just going to keep praying. And I'm just going to keep living and trusting. Because your will is the most important thing, right? When Jesus passes by. I believe he's passing by here and out there in the unseen audience. You know, there's there's a real free spirit and sweet spirit in our church. I hope that people are feeling that out there tonight. And all that is is simply the goodness of the Lord and he's passing by tonight. If you'll bow your head while they play. Again, I'll say I don't know your heart. In Jesus I don't know what you need to pray, what you need to ask God for. I don't know. I don't know what you're battling with. But I believe Jesus is passing by tonight. And I believe things that's never happened in your life before can change tonight. Faith. Faith moves the heart of God. Do you believe? Do you have something you want to pray about? What about out in the Facebook audience? I don't know your heart. I, I, I don't know even how many of you are watching tonight. If the number's not important, the important thing is it's you that's watching. It's you that God is speaking to. He's passing by. He's passing by. Would you call on him tonight? Would you call on his name? Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us this day. Thank you for giving us this service tonight. God, we've been kind of strongly, I know, but thank you for the message. Thank you for the strength to preach again. And Lord, thank you for these that have come forward to pray and others that are praying in their, their seat. God, and those that I don't even know tonight or can't even see, thank you for every one of them that has bowed their head or, or whispered a prayer to you tonight, God. Lord, I don't know their needs. I don't know their homes and their families, but God, there's not a one you don't know. Father, let there be nothing in my heart to hinder anybody. Forgive me of all my sins and strengthen me in my soul. Let there be nothing between me and my readiness. Touch the sick, the afflicted, save the lost. Oh, God, visit there in the hospital. Well, the doctor says there's no hope, God, it ain't over till you say it's over. Oh, we turn this to you tonight, God. We ask you just to bless and heal. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Still passing by. I'm a salvationist, amen. I believe in the shedding of the blood, and I believe that through that I can be saved and sealed and ready to go. Aren't you glad? Are you glad you come to church tonight? Amen. Amen. Ain't God been good to us this evening? I hope that the people out in the unseen audience has got his blessing as much as I have uh, for being in his house. And uh, Now we know why the devil didn't want us to come on. He didn't want uh, people out there. We was going to preach here. But uh, we've reached other people tonight by God's grace. And the devil just didn't want people to hear. 
that Jesus is still passing by. Amen. Why? Because he knows somebody might pray and right. receive something good from the Lord. Good night, Facebook. And thank you for being with us tonight. May God bless. Amen.